Hello everybody, we are so excited that you're here tuning in to Malibu Pacific Church Online. My name is Joel. And I'm Sayona, and we wanna invite you to sit back, find a cozy spot and maybe a drink and enjoy these 40 minutes as we look at a story of Jesus doing a miracle. Mm -hmm. So Joel, yeah. have you ever experienced a miracle before? I totally have. Uh, when I proposed to my wife, she said yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I mean. Have you ever experienced a real miracle? Well, that was a real miracle, but I, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, yeah, so a couple of years ago, uh, I was really, really sick. The doctors didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, the leadership of this church came over to my house. Uh, they put hands on me. This is pre-COVID, so it was okay. Uh, laid hands on me, and then they started praying for me. And within the matter of weeks, we got some answers to what was going on. And on top of that, I'm good to go now. So I feel like that was a huge answer to prayer and a miracle in my life because I was really sick. Mm, that's awesome, Joel. Wow. I love that story of healing. And we believe that God can do a miracle in your life no matter what that um, thing might be that you need God to work in. Mm -hmm. We also believe that God can do a miracle through you. And so whatever lives little bit you may think you have, that God could use that as a miracle in your life. So in this story that we read today of the feeding of the 5,000 with five loaves of, of bread and two fish, Jesus does this great big miracle. And so let's think about what little you might have that God could use for big miracles. Absolutely. So for these next 40 minutes, find a comfy spot and let's worship together. We are your church. We 
If you're ready to join in and go local, we wanna get you bingo cards and business cards to give out on your journey. So what you can do is find them on Instagram or on Facebook. We're gonna plaster them all over our social media. You can screenshot it, you could print it, however you want, you can do this digitally. Or if you'd like this physical copy in hand, we're gonna have them at church, Monday through Thursday, nine to three. Please come in, social distance, masked, and we'll get these to you. We also, speaking of masks, have masks to give you so that you can wear them out as you're going local and give them out to those around. We hope to see you in person or digitally doing our Go Local campaign. Hashtag Go Local MPC. Hey everybody, I'm here with Mitch. We're at Becker's Surf and we are in the Go Local MPC hashtag Go Local. So what we want to do is have you guys come down. Somebody come down. We're going to have a $50 gift uh, card here. And the first person, family who comes in here, 50 bucks on us. Anything for Mitch? I don't know. Do you have anything for 50 well, bucks on Mitch? We've got plenty for 50 bucks. Plenty. All right. So come down. After you buy it or come down, buy more than $50 worth of stuff. Let's help support the local businesses. Hashtag. Hashtag Becker Surf. So hashtag Becker Surf. We'll see you there. Thank you. Hey, Malibu Pacific Church, welcome to our online service. We're glad you're here and joining us with this new series called Go Local, Malibu Pacific Church, MPC hashtagging. Make sure you uh, follow us on Instagram because there's lots of great gifts for everybody, uh, for people in our community to help the local businesses. We uh, discovered that uh, our businesses are struggling here in our city. Uh, because of COVID and the economy. And so we as a church decided to let our community know that we are for them and the church is for them. So we're doing the series called Go Local and doing a campaign to get out into the community and into the city and uh, letting people know we love them so, so very much. I know that we're a little bit out of our element uh, for extroverts and introverts. I'm an extrovert, I love meeting new people, but even meeting new people sometimes it's like, ah, oh, a little, little awkward, it can be. And my wife is an introvert and she's like, I don't need to meet any new people, I wanna be home, or I get rest by being by myself. And so either way, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, to go out and meet new people and let, let them know that we are for them, the church is for them, and how much we love them can be a little awkward. Uh, but I think God wants us to take a step of faith. Do you remember the, the first time that you jumped into the swimming pool? Remember when you were a kid or you were up on that high diving board and everybody was saying, jump, come on and jump, come on and jump, jump in the water, you can't get hurt in the water. And you're like on top of that diving board and you're, you're just saying, I don't know, it looks like a long ways down and, and you're a bit scared to do that. Well, that's the way it is with our faith walk with God. And, 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 and maybe the first time jumping into the ocean and you were scared about the waves and they were just crashing down on you and all your friends are like, come on, come on, come on out. The water's great, freezing here in California, but it's great, it's great. And finally you jumped in and you're like, I don't know. And the waves are crashing and it knocks you over. Um, there's fear. Whenever we do something for the very first time, there's fear because we don't know if we have what it takes to make it work but God is working on our faith muscle here at the church. And God wants to use us to do something amazing to bless our community because God loves the world, world. For God so loved the world that he gave us his son. And we as the church are the body of Christ. We are representing Jesus and people need Jesus like no other time. 
There's this amazing story in the Bible, and some of you who grew up in church or went to Sunday school, you're probably like, oh, I already know the end of the story. I already got it. I know what's going to happen. But it's, it's Jesus feeding the 5,000. And there's a point in the story that I think every single one of us wrestle with or struggle with or leads us to the edge of the pool, and we're not sure if we want to jump in. But that's exactly where God wants to take us. And so in the story of the feeding of the 5,000, if we can apply this one principle, it has the power to change the world. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 1, the story begins like this. When Jesus heard what had happened and what just happened, John the Baptist, his cousin, was uh, speaking against uh, Herod and he had an illegal marriage and John kept uh, making uh, Herod the, a sermon illustration. So finally he just had him beheaded and he just heard that his cousin had died. So that's what just had happened. And so Jesus, probably feeling a lot of sorrow, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. And when Jesus landed, he saw a large crowd. He had compassion on them and he healed their sick. It's amazing that wherever Jesus was, there were large crowds everywhere because everybody wanted a piece of Jesus. I think that's the way it should be with the church. With, when we're doing it right and we're hitting it on all full cylinders and the church is being the church, the people would love to hang out with Christians, with the body of Christ. And so as evening approached, there's a large crowd along the hillside. Evening approaches, starting to get dark. The disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. In other words, there aren't any McDonald's out here. There's no way that we can feed all of these people. And so we have a problem here. So Jesus, send them away. We want to stay close to you. You take care of us, Jesus, but forget everybody else. That's a little bit of like the church, isn't it? Hey, we're all huddled up singing Kumbaya. We're good. Who cares about everybody else? And so Jesus then says, this is a wonderful opportunity for my disciples and the future church to learn a very important lesson. In verse 16, he said, Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And at that moment, we all feel that tension. Now we see a need, there's large crowds, there's businesses going under, our friends need our help, there's people in the hospital, there's things that we see need to happen. Our hearts do break for those who are in need, but we're not sure what we can do about it. We're like, send them away, I don't have the ability, I don't uh, have all the talent to be able to handle it, I don't have the resources, I don't have the education. So God, I, we're just gonna have to send them away. And Jesus, in this moment, recognizes where they were, and he said this, no, uh, you don't need to send them away. You give them something to eat. And then, in verse 17, the disciples take an assessment of everything that they have, and what do they have? Verse 17, we, we, we here only have five loaves of bread and two fish. Isn't that how we are? I mean, we make an assessment of what the need is, and it's too big for us to handle. So, so we're, we're like, this is all we got. This, this, is, uh, this is all the education I have. I, I only have two years of junior college. I, 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 don't, I, I don't even have a degree. I, I, I didn't finish high school. I, I don't have any money. I, 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 I haven't been educated in that. I, I don't know the Bible. I haven't gone to seminary. I don't have enough to take care of what this problem is. And then in verse 18, Jesus said, that's fine. Bring whatever you have to me. Bring it to me. You got five loaves, two fish? It's good enough. You got a two-year college education? That's good. Bring it. Um, <laughs> you, you got a little bit of experience as a mechanic? That's cool. Bring that. You know, you, you didn't finish high school, but you love to play soccer? You love soccer? Great. Bring that. Whatever you have, just bring it to me. That's it. Just bring God whatever you have. He said to them, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and he broke the loaves. Then he gave them back. I love that verse. 
Jesus gave the disciples back the five loaves and the two bread. When we give it to Jesus, he gives it right back to us after he blesses us. The very thing that he gave them, he got it back and they got it back. And in that moment they, uh, that Jesus then gave it to the disciples, he gave it to them, and the disciples then gave them all the bread and the loaves and it kept multiplying to the people. And that is exactly where God wants us to learn this lesson. That God wants us to give to him and do what we can do and trust God that God will do what only God can do. That, that God wants us to learn this lesson that, that God wants us to give to him the little that we have and trust him with the little that we have and then trust Jesus to do what only Jesus can do. Friends, if we can get to that point and begin to realize and understand that God simply wants us to take a little bit of step of faith and give him the little that we have, take that little step that we know that we can take one little step into the water and trust God to hold us up with the rest. That if we as the church could get this one right, that we would just do or take one little step of what we can do or of what we have, and then trust Jesus to do what only Jesus can do, something amazing is going to happen. We're going to experience a miracle. And so they, the disciples started to hand it out to everybody. And he gave it to all the people and they ate and they were satisfied. And the disciples picked up the 12 baskets left over from all the pieces. And the number of those who ate were about 5,000 men besides the women and children, probably 10 to 15,000 people. It kept multiplying over and over and over. Malibu Pacific Church, God simply wants us to give to him the little that we have, whatever it may be, a smile, a, a word of kindness, uh, pay it forward of a cup of coffee, go down to a business. We can all walk into a store, just walk into a store, say hi to somebody, go and meet the owner and say, hey, we're praying for you, we're behind you, we love you. We can do that. What is, what is the little that you can give God? And then trust God to do what only God will do. When we take a step of faith, we experience God's faithfulness. When we take a step of faith, a small one, we experience all of God's glory and God's faithfulness. We experience God. But the story doesn't end there. And so then, in verse 22, immediately, in other words, that was lesson 1.0, and these two stories are connected. This is lesson 2.0. Let's make sure the disciples get it. And isn't that true with you and me, with God? <laughs> when we don't pass the class the first time, <laughs> God has a way of just repeating the class and helping us to really learn the lesson because God is wanting to grow our faith. So immediately, in other words, immediately right after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. So after everybody was fed, time to go home. After he dismissed them, he went up to the mountain side by himself to pray. Whole other story, but Jesus spending time alone praying. And when evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffed up against the waves and against the wind was pushing against the boat. Isn't that just God teaching us a lesson? The disciples trying to row out in the middle of the night, the wind comes up and we know about wind here at Malibu and the wind is pushing them and they're like exercising all night, just pushing this boat, trying to get to the other side. And during the dawn of the next day, they had been struggling all night, doing the very thing that they're good at. See, God was even teaching them that you had learned how to fish and you're professional fishermen and you're great fishermen and God humbled them in the very thing that they're good at. So they're getting tired of rowing and rowing. Shortly before dawn, so they've been going at it all night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, 
They were terrified and they said, it's a ghost, it's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, and isn't, isn't this our story? <laughs> Don't be afraid. Isn't that the thing that keeps us from taking a step of faith and trusting God, taking a step and jumping? Isn't that what we all struggle with? Don't be afraid, verse 28. And then Peter gets it and he says this, Lord, if it is you, see, lesson 2.0, Peter's starting to get it. He's, he's connecting the dots. He's going, wait a second. When I trust God with five loaves and two fish, when I start to trust God with the little that I have, and I do only what I can do, and trust God to do what only God can do, miracles happen. And so Peter didn't make a stupid decision and just do something crazy on his own. He knew that if Jesus called him to do it, that God would come through on his end of the bargain. That if he took a step of faith, he, he would then experience God. So if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. What can Peter do? Peter knows how to get his foot over the boat and take a step. I know how to do that. I don't know how to walk on water, but I know how to go over a boat and take a step. I'll do what I can do, and I'm gonna trust Jesus to do what only Jesus can do. And so Jesus said, come, come on. Let's start walking on water, brother. Then Peter got out of the boat, took one step and another step and did what only Peter could do, got out of the boat and he walked on the water and he came towards Jesus. So what I wanna do right now is take a step and show you how I'm going to walk on water. Just kidding, <laughs> that's not happening. I can't take a step, but I do not know how to walk on water. And so then he said, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me, save me. Immediately, there's that word again, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and he caught him. And I can only imagine, I'm adding this, oh, Peter, you were so close, man, you had it, you had it, man. And the moment you started to look at your abilities and you took your eyes off of me, the moment you forgot, do what you can do and trust me to do what only I can do because I'm God and I can do all things. The moment you started to doubt and you, you looked at your abilities and your talents and what you could do and stopped depending on me, that's when he began to sink. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat, they whipped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. At that point, they're like, all right, all right, all right. The feeding of the 5,000, I was kind of like, yeah, I'm not really sure if Jesus is God, but now that I saw Jesus walk on water, okay, I'm in now. <laughs> yeah, now I believe that, now I, you know, now I believe that he is God. So this is for all of us, friends. What is your, what is the one little thing that you have? What's your five loaves and two bread? What's your little step? What is it that God's calling you to do? What is it in our church that, that God is saying, you know what, you need to go and take a step and go hang out with some junior hires. And you're like, I don't have uh, ministry experience. I haven't gone to seminary. Can you talk to people? Can you use your mouth? Does it work? Do the one thing you know how to do and trust Jesus to do what only Jesus can do. I mean, for all of us here at Malibu and all of our businesses down here, down the hill and down the ocean and everybody around here. Can we walk into a business and play a bingo game? Can we just say, hey, you know, what can we do? Or just glad you're in town and glad you have this business and, and just strike up a conversation. Just say, hang in there, don't quit. And uh, we're here for you. Can you say that? Can you do that? What is the one thing that you can do? And let's trust Jesus to do what only Jesus can do. Can you hand out a bulletin on a Sunday morning? Can you help hold a camera uh, on our weekdays or weekends? And can you come down and clean? Can you stuff an envelope uh, for a letter to go out? Can you send a word of encouragement? Can you just show up at eight o'clock to 810 on Instagram and, 
and pray with everybody else in the church. Just listen to the prayers. Uh, can you just take one little step? And Jesus is saying, when you give me your little, I'll turn your little into a lot. Malibu Pacific Church, we want to encourage you to play the bingo game. It's like, buy somebody a cup of coffee. Do what you can do. And then trust Jesus to do what only he can do. Friends, when we turn around and take that step into the pool, do you remember the first time that your parents said, come on, jump, what happened? When you're on the edge of the pool and you're a kid and you trusted them, what happened? Your mom and your dad, whoever it was, they caught you, didn't they? Jesus will catch you also. And you're gonna experience the embrace of God and the faithfulness of God and the richness of God when we do what only what we can do and trust him to do what only God can do. Let's pray. God, thank you for this incredible lesson for all of us. All of us feel the tension and the fear of taking a, a step because we just don't feel like we're adequate. We don't feel like we have enough. But God, we know that when we give our little to you and trust you with it, you will do what only you can do, what God can do. You are the God of multiplication. You're the God who, who feeds the thousands, who cares for the hungry, who heals the sick. You are the God of the heavens and the earth, and you are the God who are the miracle God who can do all things. And so God, today, we as a church will choose to take a little step and give you the little that we have, knowing that you have the power to multiply it, not for us, but to bless the world that you love so much. In Jesus' name, amen. When darkness, when darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, when brokenness and pain are all I know, I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. My fear, my feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand.
a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. When I'm standing in your love. Hey, Malibu Pacific Church, thank you for joining us today. I want to encourage you to take that next step. And so we uh, love what we're doing and we love being a generous church. You are a generous church. And uh, by playing the bingo game, this is a great opportunity for you to give your five loaves and two fish. Grab one of these online, uh, screenshot it on Instagram, or come by the church and we'd love to give you one of these. But it's so easy, and this is our little step here in giving God our little. Um, you know, check on a friend, check in on them. Send them a text, how you doing? Just encourage them, send them an email. That doesn't cost any money. Invite somebody to church or somebody online and say, hey, check this out and forward this uh, this uh, sermon series today to somebody that you just love and say, you're gonna need this, you're gonna love this. And so we can easily give God our little and trust God to do what only God can do. Thank you so much for your generosity. Um, we are solving a major, major problem here in our community. We are ble blessing restaurants and businesses and gyms and yoga places so that they can keep going and that they can survive during the season. So make sure that you keep giving online. We want to encourage you to give online. We give uh, to the things that are important or automate the things that are important. I automate uh, our housing, our, you know, our rent. I, I automate our PG&E bill. I automate our Netflix. And so we automate the things that are important. So I want to encourage you to automate your giving to Malibu Pacific Church backslash give. And uh, let's keep this thing going. Let's keep being generous. Let's keep growing the church and letting everybody know that God loves us so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity. God bless and we'll see you next week. these churches because we are committed to what we believe the church was all about and it wasn't about church people it was about people people every single person regardless of what you believe you are welcome here
Your power.